Okay, uh, dear Dhamma friends, we have come to the uh, Dhamma sermon of this uh, today's retreat. So, please give your consent by saying Sadhu Sadhu. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Silavatao so Kottita Bhikkuna Panchupadana Kanda Sunyato Yoniso Manasika Tabbati Dear Dhamma friends, as you all know, we are using a particular sutta for this series of uh, retreats and that is nothing but Silavanta Sutta, which comes in uh, Samyutta Nikaya, Khanda Samyutta. It relates about the five aggregates, where a discussion occurs between two prominent Arahans, Venval Sariputta and Venval Mahakottita. In one time, Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Mahakottita staying at uh, Migadaya in uh, Isipatana, where Buddha delivered his first Dhamma sermon, Dhamma Chakkapavattana. But at this time, Venerable Mahakottita and Venerable Sariputta were residing there. So after days abiding, Venerable Mahakottita approaches Venerable Sariputta and asks a question. So after someone establishes himself in uh, morality, what next he has to do? So as we all know, Vindabal Sariputta, without mentioning much about the concentration, he immediately mentioned about the vipassana practice, about the wisdom practice. Where he says the five clinging aggregates has to be contemplated, has to be observed as anicchato, dukkato, rogato, gandato, likewise, he is using 11 terms. We can drill them down, we can uh, sort of narrow them down to three aspects that we call as impermanent, suffering and non-self. So today I thought of little explaining more towards the non-self aspect and even they are more into the sunyata or the emptiness aspect. Because we quite often discuss this uh, subject and in a way it is very interesting subject. And uh, sometimes we don't exactly use the term sunyata but we use some uh, close terms so that everyone can understand. Sometimes we call it uh, space, some kind, sometimes we call it uh, objectless awareness. Uh, so likewise we are using some appro- approximate terms but we can uh, very much refer it as Sunyata as well. And again you might have heard Buddha has referred these states as the Vimokha Mukha, sort of doors to Nibbana. So in a way those are little advanced states and uh, quite useful to understand these areas because our practice uh, vastly involve these states. Sometimes if we don't recognize the importance of these states, we may be even omitting these states or neglecting these states and continue to proliferate, continue to go uh, pass in the milestone. Suppose we have a, a sort of a place to land, say we are going rowing a boat and uh, we are uh, instructed by someone that there is a safe area, safe land, kind of an island, so please reach there, please use it as a refuge, as an island. But if we couldn't recognize that as an island or if we couldn't appreciate it, then we still keep rowing. We are past in the island and we still keep rowing without knowing the value of it. So these states are also like that. It is not that these are extremely far away or extremely difficult states, but at the beginning we don't know about them because our minds are so corrupted. 
so polluted and our minds are fully associating objects so at the beginning we don't know even objects because we are fully with distractions so if you consider typical human being so who doesn't know anything about dhamma who doesn't know anything about mindfulness so he is living con- constantly in a different world so from the very moment he wakes up he wakes up into a different world he is thinking about what he would do today how i am going to my working place or how i am going to college or what i am going to do next so what will my parents would do what would my uh, children would do so what would my uh, boss would do so likewise so he is constantly going one after the other and maybe even distracted towards sensual pleasures he may see certain things and carried away with the content of it he may hear certain sound and uh, he get lost in the sound he may feel a odor and he is lost fully there and he may be enjoying some food and the taste is taking him victimizing him so he may be enjoying some pleasures through the touch sensation so he wants to have it he is indulging in it so fully lost in it and if those five are not there he is thinking he is proliferating constantly thinking yes. so buddha says it's like a uh, skin taken out cow so if you think about a cow suppose the skin has totally taken out but still alive say as a simile buddha is telling if the skin is totally taken out but the cow is living if he goes to uh, open space you know there are birds flying who are interested about flesh they land on this cow's body which is now full of uh, say blood full of flesh and they start eating if he want to get rid of that and want to protect him herself and he suppose he is going inside water then the there are fishes in the water they come and eat it suppose he want to go under a tree there are worms and all the insects in the tree so they come and eat so buddha says so constantly these senses are under the impact of various uh, impingements and they are constantly bombarding our senses so therefore if someone is not mindful we are completely lost in these experiences so therefore in one sutta buddha says sometimes monks before actually i become enlightened so my mind wandered towards five sensual cords so i have enjoyed five senses as you know buddha before become enlightened he spent 29 years in household life so he, he enjoyed to the maximum and he is explaining so i had three palaces without any men full with females i enjoyed the pleasures so i have something su- suitable for summer another palace suitable for winter another palace suitable uh for the other side so likewise so he is ex- explaining to the after his enlightenment how much indulgement how much enjoyment he had during these 29 years so once he left the house still he is now telling in a particular sutta this is comes this comes in salayatana samyutta called kama guna sutta where buddha is telling monks so while before i become enlightened so my mind wanders my mind go into stray thoughts where the previous uh, sensual pleasures i had they have kept kind of impressions say for example you enjoy some food now you have finished enjoying it but kind of a impression remain in your heart impression remain in your mind so even though now you have finished eating it you you have some kind of a perception about what you ate suppose you uh, 
saw some sight. Suppose it's really beautiful. Now it has already gone. It may be yesterday, day before yesterday you saw it. But still have some kind of impression in your mind. Similarly, if you hear some beautiful song, something uh, good music, even though it has now completely finished, still certain impressions are left in our mind. So similarly, all these five sensual chords have the danger of leaving their impressions in our mind. So it is true that they give some pleasure, it is true that they are providing some enjoyment, but still the drawback is they are leaving some impressions. So certain signs are in available in our mind. So e- even after this sensual chords are gone, all the experience are finished, completely deceased, still now the mind is talking. Mind is luring towards these various impressions. So Buddha is telling, so be- before he became enlightened, his mind also now going and staying in these impressions, old sense impressions. And again he says, presently also I am seeing, I was seeing before enlightened, I am seeing various things, maybe sights, sounds and all. So my mind go and stay there. And even little I go to the future and again stay there. So I thought to myself, so this would be really dangerous for me. It is really dangerous for my practice. It would cause for downfall. So I better protect my mind. I better be mindful. So he is using the terms. Apamado sati chetaso arakko karaniyo. So he is advising monks, telling monks, so I thought to myself, I have to be diligent, I have to be mindful. Apamado sati chetaso arakko karaniyo. So I have to protect my mind. Then he instructs the same way to the monks, telling monks, your minds are also operating the same way as my mind operated before my enlightenment. Now he is instructing to the monks who are unenlightened and he is telling to the monks, my mind also strayed on these five sensual cords, Panchakama Guda, before I became enlightened. Your minds are now wandering to the same places. So do the same thing what I did. So be diligent, be mindful and protect your mind. And then Buddha says, understand there is a sensual sphere in which your eye completely ceased and the perception of form has fades away. So the Pali phrase there is, se ayatane veditabbe yatha chakkucha nirujjati rupa sanyacha virajjati. There is a kind of a sensual, kind of a sense sphere where the eye has completely ceased and the perception of form Perception of vision has slowly fades away. You just aware of that sense sphere. And he continued to say, Se ayatane veditabbe yatta sotancha nirujjati sadda sanyacha virajjati. Where the existence of ear complete deceased perception of sound has slowly fades away. Similarly, know the sense sphere where your nose completely fades away, completely ceased and the smell, the perception of smell has slowly fades away. Now there is the sphere, sense sphere where tongue completely ceased and the perception of taste has slowly fades away. Again Buddha repeat, tells to the other faculty, other sense sphere, 
No, there is the sense sphere available that the body complete is seized and the perception of touch has gradually fades away. Similarly, no, there is the sense sphere where the mind ceased and the mental impression, perception of ideas slowly fades away. So it's a, in a way kind of a different language. So when monks heard this, so they get puzzled. And to they are more worried after telling that Buddha just rose up from his seat and went into his kuti, to his Ganda kuti. And they were in big trouble. So they didn't understand what Buddha was talking and then they approached Venerable Ananda and they pleaded, Venerable Ananda, please, we didn't understand what Buddha said in a sort of a concise way, so please explain us. And then Venerable Ananda didn't immediately come forward and tell the answer, but he refused, telling that you are, when Buddha is available, you are just coming for me, it is useless, you better ask from the Buddha. Then these monks are sort of persuading him to answer the question and then Venerable Ananda is telling, so Buddha has told something, a kind of a sense sphere where the typical six sense bases are ceased. So you can imagine kind of a practice here Buddha is explaining. So in our practice, say we are considering Anapanasati. So we will see how practically we can touch this sense sphere which Buddha is referring. Say you are observing Anapanasati and you are now experiencing in-breath and you are experiencing out-breath and this is through the body sphere, Kaya Yatana. So you are experiencing it. And now suppose this uh, in-breath and out-breath fades away. You may feel little kind of a touch sensation, you may feel kind of uh, warm or hot feeling, heat or little cold. So this all fades away. Now all are in the sense sphere. You are feeling through the body and the outside objects are in the uh, Potab, that is the touch, tangible sensations, so all are now fading. You might have experienced these things, so at the beginning your breath appears gross, but later it becomes subtle. So Buddha is telling, so let it become subtle. Pasambayam kaya sankara nasa sissamiti sikkati. So you let the breath calms down. You don't get, you don't worry. You just be happy, just content about what is happening. And then slowly, slowly, slowly it disappears. Suppose you are able to maintain it, let it slowly fades away. Then you are coming to an area, you can't sense anything. If you are not putting your attention to feeling, if you are not putting attention to mind, or if you are not putting attention to any other object, then ultimately mind will touch the sense sphere which Buddha is referring, where body ceases and you can't feel the body. It is so light. You are in a kind of a balloon-like experience, extremely light, you have full pasaddi, tranquility, your body becomes very light. You are feeling enjoyed, you are feeling uh, lightness. So you, if you refer your body, nothing you can catch to hold. And if you are not looking at your mind, then, then you are not taking any object to get hold on, for the consciousness to manifest. Then you are touching the sense sphere which Buddha is referring. So in other terms, we are touching the emptiness. So, it is not 
the anapana sati is the only way to touch this but suppose you are observing feeling say you are closely observing how happy feeling arises and it is slowly arising now changing it's fading away and again it is some another feeling arise changing fading away so slowly slowly you are mindful about it and you are practicing diligently again and again you are experiencing this slowly mind develops some dispassion and ultimately this feeling completely go away and mind becomes really peaceful if you are not using your attention now to the mind if you are not using your attention to the body and all, all only object mind was associating is the feeling and it also completely vanished then your mind now again touches the emptiness this is another way that we can touch emptiness so this is through the inside how you can touch emptiness on the other hand suppose you are looking at outside so you see some sight so certain impression is there certain sight appears so you are seeing something suppose you are not interested about it at the beginning you see it clearly okay you identified it because you recognize who it he is or something like that but later you have kind of a dispassion towards it you are not interested if you are doing like that since you are interested fades away this sense impression which occurred due to form also slowly fading away and your eyes start to close because it's not interested of seeing no point of opening the eye so now i slowly close in down and the perception you had the mental image created due to this form also fading away suppose you are not hearing anything suppose you are not getting any smell suppose you are not tasting anything suppose you are not feeling much kind of a distraction due to touching and suppose you are not thinking then you have to you are touching the emptiness again suppose a bell rings sometimes you might have seen certain meditation teachers they simply ring a bell and ask you to hear it till it fades away so you are very concentrated calm and you fully absorb that bell sound and that bell sound slowly calming down and your mind also calming down suppose you are able to maintain your attention throughout this calming down process and you didn't jump to a another sound didn't touch your eyes are closed and you are not taking any smell you are not tasting anything and you are not bothered about the touching and you are not thinking if only object is right now the sound once sound fades away if there is a perception that also fades away if you are not holding it then again you will come back and land on the emptiness suppose there is a smell lockers so none of them are permanent so even a beautiful smell pleasant smell occurs if you are not so much greed to it you will let it come and let it go once this smell fades away and if you are not going to any other object once the smell fades away again you are landing or plunging into emptiness similarly through the taste you may come to that similarly through the touch sensation you can come to that so that is how through anapana sati in breath and out breath you can reach there similarly through uh, elements 
say you are able to feel stiffness, feel uh, tightness, feel lightness, feel heaviness, all these element characteristics. If it is fading away and if mind does not go and land upon any other thing, after any of these impressions fades away, you will ultimately land or plunge into emptiness. So this is how Buddha is explaining. So know about this sphere, sense sphere. So in a way, it is very useful and very interesting to touch it. So our practice, therefore, involves certain amount of restrainment because if we are not restrained, we can't do it. Because when uh, in-breath and out-breath fades away, if mind starts wavering and if you become sort of uh, frightened, if you become agitated, if you start thinking, then you can't achieve it. Similarly, when say a sound fading away, if you start uh, sort of thinking about it or if you start who made that sound, who created it, likewise if you start proliferation, you can't do it. So you have to fully with this experience, completely in the present moment and the present moment experience slowly fading away and ultimately you will plunge into emptiness. So it is not a, in a way, extremely difficult task. So we can't be in this very simple experience. So that's the most difficult part. So we are adding more things. So at the beginning, therefore, in our practice, we use lot of effort. So we sit cross-legged. We keep our back straight. We are straining ourselves. If mind wanders, we forcefully bring it back. We do mental noting. So we are using lot of effort to restrain the mind. So can't help. We have to use effort. Suppose now mind is little tamed and now you can drop labeling. Okay, in breath happens, out breath happens, in breath happens, out breath happens. Previously use use label labels noting in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath to hold on to this experience. You want to cut off all the other experiences, all the other sensual uh, impressions, all the other distractions. You fully want to be with the breath, so you are using this noting. Involves a lot of effort. And through your continuous practice, suppose you are now developing mindfulness, developing concentration, and you are able to maintain it. Now you are somewhat skillful. Now in breath occurs, out breath occurs, you can fully with in breath and out breath. So you don't need to do any kind of labeling now. So you are fully aware, now in breath occurs, starting slowly, subtle in breath felt, now it is increasing, you feel some intensity of it and then it is fading away, now out breath happens, slowly evolving, you are fully with it and again it fades away, now the kind of a gap also there, you are able to experiencing it, now again in breath starts, now it's in the middle, now it is fading away, now there is a gap occurs. So you are not missing any part. You are fully with in-breath and out-breath. Sabbakaya patisangvedi asasisami kusika. Fully now mind is restraining towards this experience. Now you have mind calming down. Now your concentration develops. Mindfulness develops. And now you can reduce effort further. And through this practice, suppose now you allow further calming down and uh, continuously you can 
practice and you see how this uh, sense data changing so you develop kind of a attitude of impermanence and you are developing some wisdom as well you see these things are arising and passing away arising passing away arising passing away and you may be even going to feeling observing it that also arising passing away so you are developing kind of a dispassion so whatever your experience is ultimately entirely impermanent they come and go and you have no control also so everything occurs and you are experiencing it and you are just an experience you are just an witness so things are happening out of your control and you can simply witness it so now you are taking off your hand now further effort is reduced now slowly slowly we need to understand how to balance these faculties so at the beginning we need fair amount of effort because mind is going here and there so we need to hold it we need fair amount of effort but when mind slowly calm down when mind is behaving well when it is taming well now you have to little reduce your effort then only concentration will develop this concentration and effort has to be well balanced so you have to do it while practicing you can learn it while practicing at that time if you are putting more effort you are hindering concentration if you reduce too much effort your mind wanders so you have to little improve increase effort again bring back your attention again keep it in the track again try to reduce little effort now no problem now concentration increase further concentration increase you reduce effort now again mind wander little increase effort it's a kind of a clutch balancing like work you have to do suppose you are capable of doing it and ultimately suppose you are coming to a stage now breathing happens in a effortless way you are like an outsider you are watching it and suppose you are able to come to a region where there is no object to hold get hold on just to hold on and now you are coming to an area where there is no object and it is entirely free from friction and you should not sort of waver in that stage and you sh- should understand this is another paradigm as we discussed during our uh, discussion in question and answer session so this is you are now you are shifting to a area where there is no object but still awareness is there still mindfulness is there but there is no object to land upon you are fully vigilant so at the beginning you may fall asleep the beginning you feel uncomfortable when you are in this area but never mind we again and again practice so you trust the buddha you trust the dhamma you trust the teacher and you again and again try to land upon in this emptiness and okay no problem one minute you were there again something came now again disturbed so next time also you start again now land in emptiness two minutes they are again disturbed now you understand so i have to do enhance this emptiness so you are using effort there also you go to emptiness touch the emptiness so you are keeping mental this verbalization aside keeping away through effort so there are sounds happening there are uh, thoughts happening but you are pushing them away and you are keeping your attention in emptiness with effort 
now we are in the emptiness practice we are effort is involved suppose you are able to maintain 15 minutes so thoughts are occurring but you are pushing it away not going there trying to behave or tame your mind in the emptiness suppose 30 minutes you are able to do it suppose one hour you are able to do it now mind understand so there is a different paradigm there is a state i can maintain it is there it is not something artificial it is inside the mind it is bottom of the mind what i need to do is to avoid this external enemies to come in to protect myself so to protect this inner purity so still you are using effort so through effort now you are pushing aside all these enemies and protecting this emptiness and you develop it has a concentration we sometimes call it animitta samadhi sometimes call it sunyata samadhi so we are developing it as a concentration doesn't matter suppose you now develop that also so at the beginning to reach there it takes time say after 30 minutes only you are able to plunge into emptiness and now you are spending there some time then after some practice you are landing there after 20 minutes and spending there some more time then after 10 minutes you are landing there spending there some more time now you are understanding the art so how i can maintain it still using effort but now you can maintain it you know the taste of it and even while walking you are trying to get it so at the beginning you may be getting it through uh, sitting but now you trying to main uh, approach it even while walking so you are sort of allowing body to walk from this end to the other end you are not forcing your mind to the object but allow it to behave properly and you are slowly allowing mind to allowing mind to rest so allowing mind to calm down so now now suppose you are coming to a stage within 5 minutes you can reach there suppose you are coming to a stage instantly you can touch it when you are able to understand it is there it is not something created it is there on top of that various other thoughts various other forms sounds taste smells tangible sensations all these things are occurring manifesting on top of this emptiness so you understand it it is not it is not something artificial it is not something created it is like the canvas so you need a canvas to draw a picture all this time we are looking at the picture now we are trying to look at the canvas so in order to look at the canvas at the beginning we need to erase the picture so that's what we were doing throughout the practice so far we were erasing the picture erasing the picture so that the canvas will come out so we can see the clear white canvas now we are coming to a area even when the picture is there you are not interested about the picture you are dispassionate about the picture you understand the impermanence of the picture kind of deluding nature of the picture transient nature of the picture so you just like to land in the canvas so it appears like tasteless so you sort of your interest has gone so people like to give awards for the picture so if someone is telling i am not interested about the interested about the picture i am just watching the canvas they may tell you are mad so that is what here we are doing so we are trying to 
be in the canvas because it is not deluding us. It is not catching us. It is not victimizing us. So Buddha says, Sanimitta bhikkave upajyati papaka akusala dhamma no animitta. Monks, all these defiled states of mind happen due to signs. Sanaramana bhikkave upajyati papaka akusala dhamma no anaramana. All these unwholesome states occurring due to an object, when mind is associating object, when it is not associating an object, when it is not associating any sign, mind is not defiled, it is wholesome. So you understand Buddha's teaching as well. Now you are coming to a stage, even when picture is there, you are not interested about the picture, you are with the canvas. You are seeing things, but your mind does not catch the picture, mind does not catch the sight, but your eyes are seeing it. Your eyes are seeing the surrounding, your eyes, you are surrounding, you are kind of a, do some kind of a surveillance, your eyes are seeing various things, but mind Remain silent inside. You may hear various sounds, but mind is not interested. Mind likes to stay still. You may feel a lot of various smells, but your mind is not carried away with those. And it likes to stay still. You may be enjoying tasty food, delicious food, but you are not so greedy, you are not carried away with it. While eating, your mind is empty. Say you are sweeping the garden, you can feel various things, you can touch the broom, you are touching the ground, but mind is empty. Various thoughts are happening, they happening at the background. Mind is not disturbed. So you can see, it is not that we need to have entirely different world which is free from all these impingements, all these outside objects. It is not that you have to go to a different world which has no forms, no sounds, no taste, no t- tangible sensations, no thoughts, and then you are touching it. It is not. Rather, when everything is there, when mind is contented, internally contented, when mind is not interested about these outside things, rather it is internally satisfied. Unwavering mind. So that is what uh, Venerable Sona telling to the Buddha. It comes in uh, Anguttara Nikaya Chakka Nipata, Sona Sutta. Venerable Sona says, Bhante, there is a rock, huge rock. When uh, wind blows from east direction, is unwavering. When wind blows from eastern direction, it is unwavering. When wind blows from south, it is unwavering. When wind blows from north, still the rock is unwavering. It's not shaken. Still unshaken. Similarly, there are visions, there are forms occur They may be beautiful, they may be ugly, still mind is unshaken. There are sounds occur, they may be really interesting or really hurting, but mind is unshaken. There are smells happening, may be beautiful, may be ugly, mind is unshaken. There are tastes, may be delicious, may be really vicious, still mind is unshaken. There may be really 
bodily pain is occurring or happiness is occurring but mind is unshaken. Similarly, there may be thoughts occurring but mind is unshaken. So you can understand it is not something that we have to create. Rather, it's a matter of practice. Rather, developing our internal uh, positive qualities. Developing Sati Samadhi Panya. So, suppose someone is now developing. Still, he is not an Arahan, but he is now developing this emptiness practice. Now, he understands the theory and he is now practicing it hard. And through the effort he is achieving it, later with less effort he is there, with lesser effort he is there, now instantly he can go there and he understands the art now. And uh, when he understands the art, then he has to try how I can be there without an effort. It's a beautiful way we have to practice. So at the beginning with lot of effort we are touching it. Now slowly slowly we are understanding how I can be there without effort. With less effort. So if we are using effort to push something, it is artificial now. Now we are coming to a different paradigm. So Buddha says in Dvetanu Pasana Sutta Yankinchi Dukkhaṁ Sambhoti Sabbhaṁ Āraṁbha Pachya Sabbhāraṁbhaṁ Patini Sajj Anāraṁbhe Vimuttinu In Dvetanu Pasana Sutta which comes in Sutta Nipata Yankinchi Dukkhaṁ Sambhoti Sabbhaṁ Āraṁbha Pachya If there is suffering occurs If there is some friction occurs there is some tension occurs. It is due to effort. Sabbharambam patini sajja anarambhe vimuttino. So he is leaving effort. Anarambhe vimuttino. Without an effort, he is free. So now you have to come to an area how I can free my mind naturally. Not using, pushing things away. Not, not disturbing the process. Not by force, but naturally allow mind to calm down. So you are not now doing kind of a typical, effortful, straight, strong uh, type of practice. Now you are in a different side, so we are, that is where Buddha says, Viveka Nishitam. So you are understand, you understand the flow now. So you feel your attitude relax. Viraga Nishitam. So you maintain kind of a dispassion in the mind. So what you simply have to do, when things are coming, you have to be dispassionate to them. If you are make, maintaining a dispassionate attitude, they may not remain. They simply will go away. So your mind is like a tunnel now. So what is coming in, nothing remain. And nothing disturbed. And whole volume which came in, without a remainder, everything goes out. It's like a tunnel now. So you are maintaining your mind. So your doors are open. Your front is front door is open. Suppose like that. It's a beautiful uh, way that one Zen master telling it. His name is Shunyuru Suzuki, one of the greatest Zen master. He is asking. He is telling. Keep your front door open. And keep your back door open. And then, when the thoughts occurring, don't offer them tea. So, if you are offering them tea, 
So they will wait. They will start enjoying your tea. So don't offer them tea. So you are not bothered then. So they are coming in. It is not that you have to stop thinking. It is not you have to forcefully avoid thinking. That we did in the past. But now you allow mind to play. You naturally allow mind to calm down. You allow mind to effortless, maintain a kind of effortless attitude. If mind wants to think, so you allow it to think. Your front door is open. Now my thoughts are coming. But internally, you are maintaining kind of a dispassion attitude. You are equanimous. You are maintaining your balance. You are doing simple chitta anupasana. Your mind is very clear. And mind occurring, lustful thought occurring, you understand it is a lustful thought. You are not feeding it, you are not enjoying it, you are not fertilizing it, it will fade away. Total thing, what it came in, total thing, with it, without a remainder, it will go from the back door. So you are undisturbed, you are further calmed down. Okay, due to something, anger arises. So you understand, now angry thought occurs. Aversion is there. So it is occurring, it is coming, it is there. I am not disturbed, I am not deluded, I am not fertilizing it. It is disappearing, it is fades away. And you allow it to happen naturally. You are not maybe even sitting cross-legged. Maybe even not you are closing your eyes. You are just opening your eyes and just allowing it to come and go. You are keeping your mind like a tunnel, keeping your mind like a medium for them to come and go. They will manifest and they will go. So in this practice, so it is completely effortless, so they are, when it is occurring, so you are maintaining this entirely effortless clarity of mind and you understand how this mental verbalization happening. Now some more to learn. Thoughts are happening. So you are little understanding why they are happening. So what is the cause? You little understand when lust occurs. So where, why it has happened? You little go to the Manupasana section and check. Lust is there. So you understand there is a mental image also coming along with the mental impression or this mental verbalization, there's a little image also. Probably it may not be like really beautiful, full-fledged image, but a kind of a faded image associated with this thinking. And you understand it. And not only that, with this thinking, there may be a happy feeling. And uh, not only that, there may be an, even an attitude. So with this lustful thought, you become little tensed. You have a little hope. You have a little agitation. You have some kind of a liking. So there's an attitude. And all these things occur within the background of emptiness. So you are understanding it is not just the thought, but there are these concomitant, concomitants, mental concomitants, which has a mental sort of image, which has a feeling, which has a kind of attitude, and everything manifests in emptiness. So you are understanding these things. More and more you understand, more and more quickly they will fade away. And you are coming back and resting in emptiness. 
and you basically understand your character traits and suppose anger arises so with angry thoughts now thoughts are there with angry thoughts kind of a mental image somebody who touch your buttons press your buttons so image of that person is there so if i am feeding it i am going to mental perforation if i am feeding it i will be angry so i is there then so but now in this practice so i am trying to see it as an object without putting i part so just sadosan chittam sadosan chittam ti pajanati so angry thoughts are there aversion is there there is a mental image now i have a unhappy feeling and i have a little tense attitude and everything manifests on the emptiness so i am understanding it it's kind of a unentangling previously when these things occur i got entangled with it i got fully deluded by it but now slowly i am trying to keep my hands away from the picture i am trying to understand the mind how mind is trick my trick myself how defilements are fooling me how my character traits are fooling me and how much uh unbiased attention we should have to do it to see our own defilement as a defilement so if at this kind of practice if i am having kind of a conceit having kind of a high mind and having kind of a fixation having kind kind of a prejudice i can't do it so i have to have a very relaxed very clean mind so there are kind of a aversion occurs still aversion occurs no problem but i am able to understand it it is not me it is not mine it is anger and uh, when it is there so i understand so it does not belong to me it came by its own so if i am not hurting myself if i am not putting my hand it will go by its own so i understand the non self nature so i have no control so more and more i understanding it so i become kind of a peace full person i become kind of a happy person contented person and try to be try to maintain an attitude without delusion and uh, when these things are happening so you further and further you understand yourself your mind and more you understand yourself you become happy you become contented you become in a way innocent so you like to have clarity of mind you like to maintain mindfulness but effortless at the beginning we need lot of effort now we are trying to maintain mindfulness try to do this practice with less effort at least maybe we need little effort if our mind is fully disturbed due to various uh, incidents happen due to uh, association with other people you know you can't be a hermit 
you can't be completely away from the world to do it you may have to go to your office you may have to do your duties you have to be with your children you have to be with your parents you have to be with your friends so they all will disturb you so if your mind is fully disturbed so you can't do effortless practice immediately you may need little effort but slowly slowly you understand how with little effort you can do can do it so when you are coming to this area better if you can practice maybe at night where less sounds maybe with darkness with eyes open not closed and you are just looking at kind of gazing but not landing upon with any object kind of a empty look if you can remember previous state so forms are there visions are there mind is not interested if mind is not interested you can keep your eyes open because you have no attachment no uh, intention to go and hang on with this object rather you like to be internally peaceful internally happy contented so you can keep your eyes open so then because when you close your eyes little tension little effort may be there but when you are just keeping your eyes little open kind of a gazing without uh, very open without entirely closed but with a gazing look you may have a even less effort and you need to understand still if i am feeling tense so i am in the first noble truth i am suffering so where what is the reason so why am i tensed so maybe i am holding something maybe i am desiring something maybe i want something to happen in a different way not the way it is right now i want it a different way so you understand the second noble truth so if you understand the second noble truth the solution is letting go so you simply take off your hand you let things happen the way it is you letting go and you become less tensed and you will land upon the in the third noble truth and you will be in the emptiness and all this practice is the fourth noble truth so you are practicing four noble truths that is the last part of the dhamma anupassana where you understand if my mind is tensed if i am stressed if there is con- some kind of unsatisfaction in the mind so you fully step back and understand right now my mind is tensed my mind is stressed i am unhappy my mind is unsatisfied so you fully understand mind is now tensed unhappy unsatisfied fully understand that dukham parinyatam fully understand unhappiness fully understand suffering not to be afraid of it not to get rid of suffering rather fully understand i am unhappy right now then you understand what is the cause so you may be holding something you may be desiring something you may be clinging to something may be attaching to something you want things in a different way so somewhere i have gone wrong you understand the second noble truth if you understand the second noble truth so buddha advice just let go that desire so you simply release your hand patini sagganu passi so you simply allow you simply release your hand 
వివేక నిశ్చితం విరాగ నిశ్చితం నిరోధ నిశ్చితం వస్సగ్గ పరిణామి సో యు ఆర్ యు ఆర్ యు ప్రాక్టీస్ బికమ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ లెటింగ్ గో యువర్ పోస్చర్ హ్యాస్ టు బి వెరీ రిలాక్స్డ్ నాట్ స్ట్రేట్ వెరీ రిలాక్స్డ్ సో యు హ్యావ్ టు బి ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ కామ్ యువర్ ఎటిట్యూడ్ షుడ్ బి కైండ్ ఆఫ్ కంపోస్డ్ then only you can understand where mind is fixed where mind is tensed where stress has arisen understand this little stress and understand the cause of it and letting go of that cause so that little stress now gone when the stress is gone what is the result further calm down so you become further calm down so you become further satisfied further happy further contented again you adjust yourself check your body is there any tensed area am i closing my teeth too tight is my tongue touching the teeth too tight is my posture catching my attention so all these things you do little surveillance check and again releasing all these areas again you calm down so you become more and more calming down so if you are doing like this so you further capitalize in this emptiness more and more you understanding it more and more you be there you understand the sort of habitual patterns under understand the character traits habit patterns even you are there still thoughts are coming and you are not pushing them away but things you allow them to come you understand things are coming still i am getting to anger still i am getting to lust still my mind wander still sometimes mind get conceited still mind tries to create an i still using past incidents i am creating an i so you are simply introvert you are understanding yourself more and more you understand more and more your practice become kind of a simple and you appreciate simplicity mind becomes utterly simple more and more mind becomes clear and you appreciate this mindfulness not the temporary happiness there are temporary happiness occur when you see beautiful sights there are happiness occurring when you are tasting delicious food but not chasing behind them because those are very transient those are very temporary so you start an attitude so i better associate with this clarity of mind this simplicity of mind this defilement free state of mind so when defilements happen understand through that who am i where i go wrong where i typically i get deluded so more and more you understand yourself so that is what we need to do again and again so more and more we understand ourselves less and less we get trapped less and less we get caught then and there we can practice then and there we understand when the mind go and attached to something when the mind go and fixed in a particular view when mind is going to conceit so these things are in a way very subtle so you need to have a fairly clean background to understand these subtle uh, sort of uh, changes happening in the mind so slowly we have to do it you can't speed up that process because when you are coming to these stages 
So Buddha particularly say Viveka Nisitang, Viraga Nisitan, Nidoda Nisitang, Vasaka Parinaming, Satsambo Jangam Bhavit. Viveka Nisitang, Viraga Nisitan, Nidoda Nisitang, Vasaka Parinaming, Dhamma Viche Sambo Jangam Bhavit. You are further and further developing Bhajanga, enlightenment factors, and you can't uh, sort of do it in a hurry. If you are trying to do it in a hurry, again you will be tensed. Your mind becomes agitated. So you have to let it happen. So you may get into ups and downs. Your practice may get into ups and downs. You may be deluded, getting deluded sometimes. Sometimes get caught to anger, sometimes get caught to lust. Because still we are not perfect. Still going under the defilements. But at least time to time we have to come to this stage, understand ourselves and practice in an effortless manner. More and more we do it, more and more we understand ourselves. So it is a, in a way very beautiful practice and that is what need, we need to do in long term. So that is how, as far as I can understand that Buddha is telling Janatoham bhikkave pastato asavanam khayam vadami. Monks, only when you know the fetters, only when you see the fetters, then only you can allow them, them to fade away. You can be free from asava, you can be free from fetters. So if you are, if you can't see them, you can't be free from them. So with that note, I conclude uh, today's Dhamma sermon. So it is fully on the practice. So we are in a gradual growth. You can't come to any stage within a night. So it takes time. Taking time is all right. So we need to understand that if a fairly strong tree is growing, it is taking many years to grow. If a really feeble tree is growing, it may take only a short time. But if you are going in a long journey, it takes time. So we have to give time. So especially when you come to this effortless type of practice, when the practice manifests on its own, so if we are trying to push it, then it is dirty. So you are forcing it. So you have to let it happen and it is not kind of uh, entirely happy state that your mind throughout 24 hours staying. If that is the case, no problem. But you may get caught sometimes. But slowly, slowly those occurrences may reduce. Stillness may grow. Your inner satisfaction may grow, inner contentment may grow, your clarity of mind may grow, your mindfulness may grow. So, while keeping some prominence to it, while appreciating these things, we need to practice. Then, we can free our minds, free ourselves and avoid getting deluded. And if we are able to completely free from delusion, completely free from lust, completely free from aversion. So that is what Venerable Sariputta defines as Nibbana. Radakkaya, Dosakkaya, Mohakkaya is defined as Nibbana. So it's a gradual path. So let's uh, practice towards that. So let this Dhamma sermon help all of us to reach that final goal which is lust free, which is aversion free, which is delusion free. That is the ultimate Nibbana. So, thank you very much for listening.